Hey, I'm James. Welcome to Game Stories, where we write games that tell stories. And in this episode, we are starting a little unit on Aris, uh, or how to use the program called Aris, which is a web-based platform that allows you to make location-based games. Something like Pokemon Go, although not that sophisticated in its graphics and stuff. Um, but it's certainly sophisticated enough to allow you to place items and locations in the world and media in the world that your readers and players can then walk around and interact with. So today we're just going to learn the basic interface and learn how to put uh, media into the program and to attach it to locations in the world. So let's get started on that. I've already got a folder here called RS Media and I put a few things in it. We're going to put an elephant in our game. Uh, there's no elephant at the local zoo, so we're going to we're going to add one in the neighborhood. And I've got a picture here of an elephant, and I've got a little gif of an elephant playing with a thing, and I've got a silhouette of an elephant, and then a video of an elephant, which I took from a YouTuber. I will I don't remember her name, but I will put the link to her channel or to this video in the in the in the in the um, description video description. All right, so I've collected all my media first and I put it in a folder. I recommend this for Aris. Uh, you sort of have to, you don't have to, but it helps if you kind of know what sorts of pictures and videos and stuff you're gonna use. Collect those first and then get started. So I've done that and I will then launch the editor. Which so this is the Aris Editor webpage. Um, I've already logged in. When you first show up, it'll ask you to sign up and things like that, but um, they don't ask you for too much. Uh, and then you'll get a screen like this once you've logged in. Uh, you can sort of see a list of your games, which right now I don't have any, uh, and you can either import one or you can start a new one, which is what we're going to do. And we're just going to leave it in the cloud. So we're starting a new game. Let's call this Test Game. And the description will be just a test for a video. You might want to be more descriptive than that. Now, by default, because um, RS is developed by Field Day Labs at the University of Wisconsin-Madison. All of the game's starting default location is right smack dab in the middle of Madison. So if you live in New York City or Johannesburg or Helsinki or something, um, I recommend you start by moving the starting location to wherever you're at, right? Uh, because every location that you add to the game is going to start in whatever location you pick here. So you don't want to be drag clicking and dragging everything from Madison, Wisconsin, unless you're in Madison, Wisconsin, like me, in which case that's just fine. But I'm going to get a little more specific here. I don't want it to start on campus. I want it to start uh, kind of down over by the zoo. Uh, let's see. We'll just stick it right over here for now oh no here we go there's a little park right up here right next to the zoo or there's a fountain and i'm going to stick our elephants right in that park and we're going to save that and then it takes you to the editor screen and you can see that there's all kinds of stuff going on here we've got a top bar with some different tabs we've got a sidebar with some different tabs we've got a scene it says add scene and if you look way down here, there's a sort of weird red box. Don't worry about any of that. This one is just for, sort of for dragging around in your collection of scenes. You're not going to need more than one scene, uh, probably, unless you get really advanced. Uh, so ignore that for now. Ignore scenes for right now. Uh, ignore all this for right now. What we want to look at is media. We're going to click on media, and this is where we can upload our pictures of elephants and stuff. So we're going to start with that. And we're going to say, we're just going to call it E uh, GIF. Let's start with the GIF or GIF if you're like that. And desktop, there we go. It's a GIF. And we're going to say, open that. Look how pretty. We're going to save it. Look at him go. All right, and we'll go again. We okay, so I skipped over some time there for you. Uh, and at this point, I've got all my media uploaded and in RS on the server, which is great. Then I can go back over to the scene view. 
and I can focus on this, these tabs on the left, which are called game objects. There's a bunch of different kinds of game objects you can put in your game that have different sorts of functions. The one we care about right now is called plaques. And a plaque is just like, it's like a sign or something. It's something you're putting in the virtual world or the augmented reality <clears throat> world that lays over or the real world so that when people go there, they can click on it and they'll see the media that you put in there, some text and, and whatever media you've added. So we're gonna create a plaque for each one of these, for three different plaques. We're gonna say, we're gonna call this one, what's that? And our description is going to be, it's an elephant. The icon, so here's a couple things to know. The name is a thing that will display on the map so that players can see that even before they get there. As soon as the thing appears, they'll see the name. So if you don't want them to know what it is, you can leave it blank, um, I think. And then the text is what they're gonna see once they open it. So they have to actually get there, if you said it that way, they get there, open it, and then they'll see whatever text you put. The icon is the picture that's gonna show up on the map, and the media is the whatever picture, video, or GIF uh, that shows up once they get there and click on it. So for the icon, I wanna use the silhouette. And for the media, let's start, let's start with the picture of the elephant. So the first thing they'll see, what's that, is, and they'll see a little silhouette. And when they get there, they'll click on it. It'll say, it's an elephant, and they'll show them the elephant. Um, a really important part feature of Iris is that sort of every little window has its own save button. It doesn't sort of automatically save everything you do. You can't just X out of this and expect it to still be there. Um, if you do anything in Iris, always scroll down and check to see if there's a save button and then click save. Right now we're gonna ignore events. We're gonna ignore this sort of continue button. Don't worry about that, just hit save. And let's create, well, while I'm off screen, I will create the other two. I'll create the GIF one and I'll create the video one. Okay, now we have three plaques and it's called, what's that? Huh, what is that? And wow, what? Right now, they're not in the game at all. They're just sort of in the, in the behind the scenes of the game and we wanna put them in the scene of the game. So we're gonna go to the starting scene here and click plus. And we can add something now, add a trigger to the scene it's called. A trigger is like a location that triggers when you're nearby it. Um, and it can be all kinds of different stuff, but we are just working with plaques right now. So we're gonna add a plaque and it gives me the list. Oh dear. Seems to have done things in triplicate here. Uh, let's cancel and let's scroll back over here. This is one of the bugs that I've run into, which is that, oh man, sometimes things duplicate themselves. So I'm just gonna, notice this one is blank. I'm gonna delete that one. Let's see, this one, this one has the, the media, so I'm gonna ignore that. This one does not have the media, so I'm deleting it. All right, I think we're good now. So if you run into that, if you run into duplicate names and stuff, be careful about that because you can end up adding things into your game that are just blank, and then you'll wonder why there's a bug. So I don't know if I'm like hitting save multiple times before it's able to upload or something. I'm not really sure what's going on there, but um, watch out for that as you're, as you're working. So going back to starting scene, add a plaque. Now we just have our three. We could create a new one from here, but we're not gonna do that. Um, we're gonna say, what's that? I think was our first one. And then we're gonna add, we're gonna add them all in. Oh, what is that? And then, wow, what? Now we got our three, our three plaques. Okay, so, so far we've uploaded some media. We've created plaques with those media, and now we've added the plaques to our starting scene. Now we can go in and edit each plaque. I'm gonna start with, what's that? As soon as I click over here, a tool menu loads on the other side, which we're gonna focus on now. Uh, it's the trigger, right? We're gonna stay with this one. You can sort of pick the other ones from here. Don't mess with that. Don't mess with locks. Um, don't worry about any of this stuff. Keep it on map. 
And from here, you can sort of change the location of where, uh, of where it is. So I could drag this around and put it somewhere else. But notice that it's starting in the default location that I set for the game. I'm actually going to set it a little bit further down the street so it maybe shows up first on our walk. There's a little button here that says Available Anywhere. And right now what that means is that anybody anywhere in the world that loaded this game could click on that and see the media. Uh, if I really want it to be location-based, I have to turn this off. And then it'll give me these rings which we can play with. We're not going to do that yet because I want you just to show you how it works on a phone. Um, how do I want it to trigger? I want it to trigger by touch. I want players to actually have to click on it. I don't want them to, you know, if it's immediately, then as soon as they load the game, boop, it's going to pop up and show them the media. I don't want that. I want them to have to go and touch it. Uh, show map title. Uh, I can either show the, the, the title of the thing on the map or not. Um, and then animate icon just means that on the map, it'll actually sort of bounce up and down if I click on that. So we're not going to do that. Um, I'll actually show you how it works. All right, so now I've got it in the location, and it's by touch. It's going to animate, and I'm going to save it. I should save. Saving. Well, looks like it's saved. All right, so I'm going to disappear for a second, and I am going to load my phone screen, and we're going to open the RS app. Show you how this works. See if this goes. Yay, look at that. All right, so I'm opening Aris. And down here, let's see if I can show you this. Right down here on the bottom, there's a little thing that says mine. That's where all my games are going to be. So I'm clicking on that. And you can see test games that I named it. Uh, I'm going to click Reset, yes, and then New Game. So now you can see uh, we're at the park. I've scrolled over to the park, and uh, you can see, oh, there's only two elephants, even though I put them all in, because two are overlapped. Oh, we'll worry about that later. Um, and you can see my little one that I worked on. What's that? Is bouncing up and down. So I'm going to click on that. And I can click again to view. And it says it's an elephant. And it shows me my picture of an elephant. Beautiful. And then I click continue. And I'm back in the game. So every time I click on that, view, that's what I get. So that part is functioning. Now I want that to work with these other ones too. So let's quickly edit these guys as well. Now the feature that we don't have that we want to have uh, is to make them, here I'll come back for a second, is to make them uh, not available anywhere, right? We want them to be available only when you go over there and click on them. So let's, let's work on that. We're going to go to what's that and we're going to say not available anywhere. So I can't sit at home uh, across town or whatever and just click on things. I have to actually go there and do it. And this is the range, like how sensitive it is. I could make this really a big range so that, you know, I can make it so big that basically anybody in the country can do it. Uh, or I can zoom in and make it pretty small and make sure that you kind of have to be in that little park in order to see it. So I'm going to do that. I'm going to make this. Well, I'll leave it like that. I'll leave it a pretty broad range. And remember, I'm, I made a change, so I'm going to save it. Okay. Now, it shouldn't be visible or it shouldn't be clickable until I'm actually in that spot. Now, let's do the same thing with these others as well. So as we're walking to this park, we should sort of be able to see one after the next as we get there in the order that I want them to happen. And we'll save that. And I will disappear again, and I'll show you the phone. It should have updated uh, so that we can't click on them anymore from a distance. Let's see if that worked. So I'm going to go here, and I'm going to click, what's that? Oh, actually, you can see the range now that you have to be in. 
Let me zoom out a little bit. You can see that there's a much there's a big gray circle for for the what's that, and then there's a smaller gray circle for uh, how, what is that, and then the smallest gray circle is there. So you can see the different ranges you need to be in. You can see that I'm out of range for that. I'm out of range for that at the bottom there. I don't know if you can see that. Instead of saying click to see it, it says out of range, right? And here, if I click here, out of range. Walk so far to get there, right? Uh, so tomorrow morning, I'll see if I can film myself walking over to that park and so you can see what it's like to go click on some things in the real world. All right, so we are outside walking around and seeing if we can get closer to locations on the Aris, and I'll show you where we're at on the Aris map. As you can see, we are right outside the biggest uh, gray bubble for one of the elephants. So let's walk a little further and then see if we can click on it. Okay, as you can see, we just entered the gray shell of the zone for clickability for one of these elephants. Let's see if that'll work. Sorry about the glare here. Let's just see if we can do this. So I'm gonna click on what was that? You see it pops up. Oh, it says we're still out of range. So let's walk a little further. I'll click on the wrong one. No, oh, wrong one. There we go. Clicked on the right one. And you can see it says view. So click on view. Come on. And it should load. It's loading, it's an elephant. It's not yet loading the image. I think cell phone reception might be a little rough over here. No, it's okay. You can see it's taking a time loading. Yep, there we go. And there's our picture of the elephant. It's an elephant. Let's get a little closer and see if we can get some of the others. All right, we are now at the park and uh, inside the circle of the second elephant. Let's see if we can make it work. All right, so I think you can see our little blue dot there is right underneath the first elephant and inside the ring for this other elephant. So let's click on it. And yep, it says view. So if we click on view, it says another elephant. Yep, and there's our GIF. Look at that. All right, let's go see if we can get the third one. All right, here's what the park looks like. And the zoo, there's a little playground right over there, but the zoo is right over that hill. Okay, here we are inside the third circle. And I'm gonna try to click on this last elephant. It says view, so let's try that. It should load the video. Yep, oh, the glare is super bad, you guys. But we should be able to play this video. Let's see. Yep, yeah, there we go. I don't know if you can see that or not, but it worked. Um, hopefully the glare wasn't too bad for you to see what was going on there, but we did come to the park and uh, the locations worked. The proximities that we set for them were functional and we were able to click on the things and see our elephants. So we'll head back inside and do a, a real quick uh, review. Okay, just a quick review here. Uh, when you first create your game, you want to make sure that you set the default location and give it a name so you can find it later. Um, when you have your game already up and loaded, you're going to start by uploading media from your computer that you picked out. Uh, then you'll go back to the scene tab. And in the scene tab, you can create game objects. So far, we've learned how to create plaques. To do that, you'll just click the plus button next to plaque, uh, name it, give it a description, whatever text you want it to say when the player loads it, uh, load the icon that you want it to see on the map, and whatever media is inside. Once you have your plaques, you can add them to the scene of the game by clicking the plus button, clicking plaque, and then picking the plaque that you want to add. Once your plaques are in the scene, you can click on each individual one, and you can set the whether it's available anywhere or not, and then the proximity of how close you have to be to it in order to access it. Uh, the icon should be there whether it happens right away when the player starts the game or by touch, meaning they have to go click on it, and whether it bounces on the map or not. And then once you have all that in the scene and set it the way you want, make sure at the bottom of every of, the, of those tabs, make sure you're always clicking the save button. 
uh, so it updates and you don't lose any of your work. And then you can go out in the world and test it out and see if those things actually worked. And that is really enough of Aurists to get started uh, making interactive tours and even telling stories with uh, locations. But um, in the next video, we will talk about some more advanced features of RS, and then following that, we'll get into what makes a good location-based story. Okay, thanks for watching, and we'll see you next time.